Hi, I'm Russell Eyrig from the Cincinnati Art Museum, and today we're going to make Cubist Still Lifes. A still life is just any artwork that shows objects that are mostly not moving. I say mostly because a lot of older still lifes show insects or little critters. People have been making still lifes for a very long time, and they've changed a lot throughout the course of history. In the early 20th century, a group of artists that included Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque started making still lifes that tried to show objects from multiple views in the same painting. They represented the objects as simple lines and shapes that overlapped each other, and this style became known as cubism. So to make our still life, we're also going to look at one scene from multiple views and make those drawings right on top of each other so that they overlap. Now, to set up your still life, I want you to pick three objects, and it can be nice to have a little variety in a still life, so maybe think about things that have different sizes and different shapes. And once you set up your still life, I want you to pick three different views of it. And maybe don't just walk around it, also think about height. Maybe can you get above it or below it? Now, when you start drawing each view, I don't want you to take any more than 10 minutes on each drawing. Set a timer if you have to, but working faster will make you focus on the big picture and worry less about the small details. I'm using my iPad again to do the drawing because it helps me show you the process, but really you can use whatever drawing materials you have at home. It's a good idea to do your first drawings very lightly. We're going to darken up those lines later, and don't worry about being perfect. Just try to capture the scene quickly. Focus more on the shapes and lines you see and less on the details. Now, on my iPad, I have the advantage of being able to just look at one drawing at a time and then combine them later, but it's okay to just draw right on top of your last drawing. I actually spent less than 10 minutes on each drawing, so you can definitely do it in 10 minutes. Now, once I have all three drawings done, I'm gonna go in and darken up the lines I feel are most important. At this point, I can't always really tell what the object is, so I focus more on the composition. Sometimes a line from one object might merge with another and become something new, and that's kind of the point. And now that I have my lines darkened, I'm going to go in and add value. In art, value doesn't mean how much something's worth. It means how dark or light something is. Now, the earliest type of cubism is called analytical cubism. And in that phase, they tried not to use a lot of color. I'm going to encourage you to try to do the same. Try making your drawing monochromatic. That means just one color with different values. I decided to make mine all shades of blue. I put a sort of mid-tone blue underneath everything, and then I used a very light blue and a very dark blue to add value. In a later form of cubism called synthetic cubism, artists started to use collage and color, and really the goal was less about seeing an object from all the sides, but more about flattening the picture plane. So that's something you could try next. I hope you have fun making Cubist still lifes, and if you're not already a part of the Cam Connect Facebook group, join us today and then post photos of your drawings in the comment section of this video. Thanks, and I can't wait to see your still lifes.